Okay. I tried to think of about a bazillion different ways that I could um, get you this information, and this is the best that I could come up with right now. So um, I'm going to go through the first couple parts of the study guide. Um, if you have the printed off version, make sure you have that with you and ready to go. So obviously you're going to start by putting your name on the top like normal. Um, this is going to be, uh, hopefully you're keeping this together with your notes. So it's probably going to be the last part of your notes there. But the first section of the test is, um, all vocabulary. However, we're not going to sit here and rewrite all of this because all of these are in notes number one. Okay. So hopefully you still have those. Um, I would just go back and review them. There is a good bit of vocab questions there. I will tell you that they're, they're all going to be multiple choice, um, not matching because I don't like the way the Jupiter pods do their matching section. It's a little bit complicated. So um, these are going to be multiple choice, but that means you're going to be given the term and you have to choose of the options, which is the correct definition. Okay. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Um, if you do not have notes number one and you don't have these uh, terms and definitions, you need to make sure you email me so I can get those to you ASAP because there are quite a bit of them. Okay. Um, the next part, this is where we get into the uh, short answer section from study guide. Um, the first question here says, draw a food chain of a forest ecosystem using four organisms from this list. Bacteria, coyote, trout, algae, mayflies, great blue heron, and hawks. Okay. Um, and then below that, it gives you uh, kind of the definition of what eats what. The mayflies and trout are the primary consumers. The mayflies could be eaten by the trout and the great blue heron, which the great blue heron also eats the trout. The coyote is a carnivore because it eats the trout, the great blue heron, and the hawk. The hawk is a carnivore because it eats the great blue heron. Okay, so that sounds like kind of a lot of mumbo jumbo. It's really not. It's a lot easier than it sounds. Okay, um, first thing we have to start with is whenever we're drawing um, a food chain, okay, a food chain is just one path of energy. Okay, a food web is where you have all possible possible feeding relationships. Um, within that one ecosystem. So um, to draw a food chain, first of all, I have to start with the sun. Okay, we know that all um, food chains, all of the energy comes with the, comes from the sun. Okay, from the sun, the energy transfers to some kind of plant. Now, in my list up here, the only producer or plant that I could possibly have is the algae. Okay, bacteria is a decomposer, coyote, trout, mayflies, great blue heron, and hawks are all animals. So if I have the, uh, the sun going to the algae, okay, that's going to be my producer. Let me get a different color so you can kind of hopefully see the difference there because it does say to label the producer, consumer, and decomposer. So algae is going to be my producer. Okay. So, um, from the algae, I need something that eats the algae. Okay. Well, from my definition here, the mayflies and trout are the primary consumers. The primary consumer by definition has to be the organism that eats the producer. So in this case, I could put really either one of them, um, either trout or mayflies. I'm going to go with the mayflies just because. Okay, now I need something that eats the mayflies. The mayflies could be eaten by the trout and the great blue heron, which the great blue heron also eats the trout. Okay, so I'm going to go with the great blue heron. Okay, the coyote is a carnivore because it eats the trout, great blue heron, and the hawk. The hawk is a carnivore because it eats the great blue heron. So to finish this up, I could say that the hawk, therefore, is um, the tertiary consumer. Right, we have producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and then to complete this cycle, all of that would go down to the decomposer, which in this case is the bacteria. Okay, so um, and then that would uh, break it down into nitrogen and fertilizer to then feed the producers again. 
Okay, so that's just one food chain. However, I need to go back and finish labeling producers, consumers, and decomposers. So this is going to be a consumer. I'm going to just abbreviate that with a capital C. And then down here, I already said was the decomposer. Okay, now question number two says draw a food web. Okay, so this is all possible feeding relationships from question one. Okay, so I've already mentioned the algae, so I'm going to cross that off on my list. I've already done the mayflies. I've already done the great blue heron. And I've already done the hawks. So I need to get back to, and I did the bacteria. So the only two that I'm missing are coyote and trout. However, there are other relationships in there that are not shown just in this example. So I'm going to go through all of them again and show you kind of how to do this. So we have the mayflies and trout are the primary consumers. We said before that means that the mayflies eat the algae. However, they're not the only ones to eat the algae. Trout also eat the algae. So we're going to add that to the food web. Okay, now I'm going to keep going. The mayflies could be eaten by the trout and the great blue heron. Well, I already have an arrow showing the mayflies going into the great blue heron. I don't have the arrow going into the trout, okay? Because the trout can eat the mayflies as well. So I need to add that there. Then it says, which the great blue heron also eats the trout. So I need an arrow from trout to great blue heron. Remember that the arrows always point from the organism to the organism that eats it. So it's like saying the trout goes inside the great blue heron, okay? Okay, let's see one. The coyote is a carnivore because it eats the trout great blue heron, and hawk. I don't have a coyote listed anywhere on here, so I'm going to add the coyote here. The coyote is a carnivore because he eats the trout, great blue heron, and the hawk. The hawk is also a carnivore because it eats the great blue heron, and I already have that here. Okay, then I have everything coming back to the bacteria, the decomposer, which then breaks it down, um, feeding the nitrogen and nutrients back into the producer. Okay, so now I have my complete food. Web. I've listed all of the organisms. I have the bacteria, I did the coyote, I did the trout, algae, mayflies, great blue heron, and hawks. Okay, so we're good to go. The easiest way to go through and make those food webs is to just make sure you're reading line by line by line and including every single organism, okay? All right, going on to number three. What does an arrow represent in a food chain? Yes, it represents what eats what, like I just, just explained up here, okay? But more specifically, because something is eating something else, that arrow represents a transfer of energy within the food chain. Transfer of energy from one organism to the next. Okay? Where does all energy begin in a food chain? Every single time. None of these organisms can create energy on their own. It has to come from the sun. Even the producer that creates its own food cannot do that without getting the energy from the sun. So... It always begins with the sun every single time. No sun, no organisms can get energy. Where does all the energy end in a food chain? It will always, always, always end with a decomposer. Okay? Otherwise, you have a buildup of dead animals, plants, and waste. What is the most important role of red worms, which is one type of a decomposer in an ecosystem, okay? So basically, what is the job of a decomposer within an ecosystem? Their job is to break down dead plants and animals into nutrients.
which is the organic material. Okay? All right, number seven. How have animals adapted in their feet to stand on heights such as mountains and cliffs? Give three examples of an animal with this adaptation. So what do we call the adaptation where an animal is able to stand on rocky hillsides and be able to keep their grip? That's called the cloven hooves. That's the one I told you about with the, the like it's like the hoof, it's split into two toes like this. So each of them can, you know, grip one side so they don't fall. It's kind of funny looking. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is called cloven hoofs. They are cloven hooves, which means they have two toes. Okay, and then examples, we had a lot of them in our notes. Mountain goat. Llamas. Pigs. Sheep. Cows, etc. Okay, you do have to be able to give me examples of animals that have cloven hoofs um, for the test. Uh, then it says, give three examples of animals with closed hooves. This should not say closed. This should say solid. That's the other type, right? Solid hooves is where instead of having the two toes separately like this, the hoof is just all together. It won't look like that, but it would look maybe more like that. <laughs> okay. Um, no toes, no split, no, a no ability to grip, um, different surfaces. So, um, some examples, let's give three examples. So some examples are horses, mules, and donkeys, and they need them. for speed and running in wide open spaces. Remember we said that um, those closed hoofs work kind of like a um, starter's block for track runners or um, people who are racing. It gives them kind of a solid platform to push off of so they can move um, quite a bit faster. However, you would not want to take an animal with solid hooves on a rocky hillside because they can slip pretty easily. Okay. Number nine, what is the most important function of a bird? Um, remember I said that I kind of wish this was my most important function as well. Um, and that is eating. Okay. Wouldn't that be nice if your only, your main job in life was to eat? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop the video here because these next two um, are listed almost exactly like this in our notes. Um, so I want you to stop the video and pull up your notes. Try and fill that out on your own, um, and then I'll give you the answers to that um, on the next slide.